Hey guys, welcome to the next NLP Journal Club. Today we're looking at a paper called Plug and Play Language Model, a simple approach to control text generation by a bunch of people, mostly from the Uber AI lab. And the paper is going to come out at ICLR 2020 in a couple of months. So let's get into it. So first of all, to give you a bit of a background, the paper is about language models and language models model sequences of text auto regression. So let's say you have some some text X and the way language model works is you try to predict the next word given the history. So you're gonna you're gonna model this probability distribution of the text as uh, the probability of the word xi given all the words from 0 to xi minus 1. And you can train such a language model on large amounts of text. And then during inference, you could use this language model to generate some text. For example, maybe what comes out is the potato and cauliflower are both in season to make combo breads and so on and so forth. And in particular, if you're using some sort of a sampling based strategy, you're going to be getting a different text every time. And one disadvantage of using such an off the shelf language model for generating text, or it's not, it's not a disadvantage, but rather lack of precision, let's call it that way, is you don't know what text you're going to be getting, and there's no way of controlling it. There's no knobs to control the direction, kind of, in which the language model should be going. And this is kind of the question that the paper is discussing. So we, ha we have this example here about the potatoes. And ideally, you want to have some way to steer the text. Let's say you want to generate negative text, text that has some negative connotation associated with it. Let's say the potato is a pretty bad idea. Or maybe you want a positive text. The potato chip recipe you asked for, we love making these. Or maybe you want to generate a text on a particular topic, like, let's say, science, to include more science words. Or you want to maybe, maybe even combine multiple ones, like politics and positive. And this is what the paper is about. So here we have an overview of different types of language models in the past. and coming to the current language model, uh, which is a plug and play language model. So the base language model, as I said, is modeling the probability of the text um, unconditionally without having any further constraints. A uh, very popular example is the GPT-2 language model uh, released last year, uh, which was very big and it was able to, to generate very, very realistic samples. Then if you want to constrain the model further to generate, let's say, a particular type of text in a particular domain, let's say science, one thing you can do is you can fine tune this language model only with data in that domain, let's say only with science documents. And this can work, but one downside of this approach is that you need to retrain your model every time you have a new domain that you want to generate. This is not very practical. Ideally, you want to have a more flexible approach. Another approach is this was reported in this CTRL paper where you have a conditional language model, meaning you're modeling the probability of generating a text X given some attribute A. And this attribute is typically, I, I think in this paper, what they're doing is they're taking a lot of text and they're labeling the text to different attributes, different classes. And then they are conditioning on those classes and training the models to generate text given a class. So this is like similar to some sort of a sequence sequence approach, a little bit. And this works. However, one downside is that you need to have a fixed number of attributes during training. Um, and you, it's not possible to flexibly add new attributes to your model. So again, you need to train your model. And in this paper, they're proposing a plug and play language model, PPLM, which again models the probability distribution P of some text X given some attribute A. However, they're decomposing this into the probability of the text X, which is the original language model, 
and the probability of some attribute given the text x. So this is again a conditional language model. Um, however, one advantage of this approach is that you don't need to, to retrain the p of x, the big language model, every time you have a new attribute or a new text that say you want to model or, or a new attribute that say. But you can keep the same p of x model, but you can just have a new p of a given x model. And this actually, uh, what, what they do in the paper is they even show some cases where you don't need to have any model at all for p of a given x, but you can just use some statistics. So this is a kind of broad overview of how this approach works. So in a standard language model, as I said, you have a sequence of sequences of words like that you can paste, and then you have the next word prediction like okay or delicious. And in a standard language model, let's say you're going to be producing okay, but right now we want to be generating conditioned text in a more positive sentiment that sentiment direction. So we want to generate delicious. And the way this plug and play language model works is it actually has three steps. In the first step you do a normal forward pass through language model and you produce the chicken paste okay. You're producing the, the original distribution okay. Then what you're doing is you have a backward pass Basically, you, you are computing your P of A given X. You have your attribute model. And um, this attribute model is then modifying the hidden states of this language model. You're computing, you, and then you, you're modifying the hidden states, and you're recomputing the probability distribution over the vocabulary for predicting the next word here. This is the distribution, the distribution for K. We are recomputing the distribution for uh, for this word to bias that towards delicious using the information from the attribute model. And then once you recompute this, you are recalculating the most likely sequence. And this is how it works uh, in a high level. You can go into the paper for more details. To give you a bit of a, a little bit of a more insight into what this how this P of A given X attribute model is working. They're actually mainly using two main uh, attribute models. The first one is a bag of words model. Simply they compose the list of words that are in the same topics. Let's say uh, you have some words in science, legal or politics. And then what they're doing is they're computing some sort of a frequency based P of A given X. This is a very simple approach and it doesn't involve any more parameters that need to be trained. And they're also testing a discriminator model. This one is basically, you can think of this as a classifier, trained separate, train separately on um, auxiliary label data sets. For example, for sentiment, you could use a sentiment data set with a lot of positive or negative sentences to train this attribute model. So to give you a little bit of an insight of what sort of tasks they tested, one obvious one is of course sentiment. They also try out topic relevance, so they experiment whether models trained on different topics like science or politics are capable of generating condition on using this attribute model are capable of generating more topically relevant text. They also experiment the task of language detoxification which is trying to constrain the model to not produce any faith, faithful outputs. And finally, they test the task of controlled story writing, which is, which is the one that I found the most fun. So the basic idea is you want to generate a story and you want to condition the story in a particular direction. Here I have an example. So if you have an unconditional language model, maybe you generate some generic story um, here, this example actually, I should mention that it's based on a template. So you have this anchor word once upon a time, every day, that's one day, and so on. And you generate the other parts using the language model. So here you actually have a more generic type of output, which is maybe reasonable. 
but then what you could do with this plug and play language model is you can say I want more, more of a fantasy type of story and the, lang the language model is then also seeing more of a fantasy type of words like magic, spirit, demon and so on or maybe you want a more negative story which results in more negative words like strange, dangerous, dying, terrible pain and so on so it's cool to see that you can do this sort of, sort of a more controlled text generation and I can see how this could be useful, let's say, in a, to help artists to do to experiment and play around with this text tools. Let's say to improve their creative writing or something like that. So thanks for watching and please like and subscribe for some more upcoming NLP content.